David Cameron knows what you're asking yourself. Do I want this man as my next Prime Minister? Well, he calculates serious talking and harsh truths are what the voters want right now, and he got stuck in immediately. I want to get straight to the point. We all know how bad things are. Massive debt, social breakdown, political disenchantment. But I want to talk today about how good things could be. Politicians like us to feel their speeches are from the heart at all times. But when David Cameron turned to talk about the death of his son Ivan this year, the emotion was raw and unquestionable. But for me and Samantha, this year will only ever mean one thing. When such a big part of your life suddenly ends, nothing else, nothing outside matters at all. It's like the world stops turning and the clocks stop ticking. And as they slowly start to turn again, weeks later, you ask yourself all over again, do I really want to do this? You think about what you really believe in, what it is that sustains you. I know what sustains me the most. She's sitting in the front row, and I'm proud to call her my wife. The philosophical drive of the speech was that government has got too big under Labour. Why is our economy broken? Not just because Labour wrongly thought they'd abolished boom and bust, but because government got too big, spent too much and doubled the national debt. The tone was determined and upbeat. In Britain today, there are entrepreneurs everywhere. They just don't know it yet. There are success stories everywhere. They just haven't been written yet. With a focus on what a future Conservative government might look like, references to the present incumbent were deliberately kept to a minimum. And just a quick word to the man who says he abolished boom and bust and saved the world. It was you, Gordon Brown, who designed the system of regulation that helped cause the financial crisis. You want to keep it the same. We want to change it. We say bring back the Bank of England to regulate the city once more. There was a head-on challenge to the government on territory Labour views as very much its own turf. Who has made the poorest poorer? Who left youth unemployment higher? Who made inequality greater? No, not the wicked Tories. You, Labour, you are the ones who have done it to this society. Don't you dare lecture us on poverty. You have failed and it falls to the modern Conservative Party to help the poorest in our country today. And at points when David Cameron most wanted to get his message out to the watching public, he would look directly at the camera, like here on the NHS. That is why we can look the British people in the eye and say this party is the party of the NHS today, tomorrow, now, always. The slogan of George Osborne's speech had been, we're all in this together, and it was a theme David Cameron built upon as he concluded. No, we will never make it happen if we pull in different directions, follow our own interests, take care of only ourselves. But if we pull together, come together, work together, we will get through this together. And when we look back, we will say, not that the government made it happen, not that the minister made it happen, it was the businesswoman that made it happen, the police officer that made it happen, the father that made it happen, the teacher that made it happen. You made it happen. So the message overall from Manchester has been a tough one, but David Cameron knew that wall-to-wall -wall doom and gloom wouldn't do the job. So he's trying to make the country more optimistic, and in the process, he's undoubtedly given his party some serious reasons to be cheerful. If the Tories are to get to the political summit, though, there's the small matter of an election to win. We are now in the foothills of what, over the coming months, is going to feel like a long campaign. Joey Jones, Sky News, Manchester.